Well, good morning. This is Doug and my uh, Mavic Air 2, and today I'm going to take a test flight, uh, range comparison, if you will, um, between the smart controller and the original Mavic Air 2 controller. Now, I, with the original Mavic Air 2 controller, I had issues with my iPhone 7 um, uh, having the screen go blank when it was warm out. Um, it would overheat, the screen would dim, and then it would get really dark, um, to the point where I could not see anything, uh, which made uh, photo photography impossible and uh, was very dangerous for the, the drone itself, since you can't see where it's going. And for anybody that might be in the area, you just have no real control if you can't see where you're flying. So I found that to be unacceptable. Uh, you live in Southern California and you're going to have warm days regularly and uh, it's just not a good thing. So I went and bought the smart controller and uh, one of the things it has is a very bright screen. Uh, so I've uh, heard with all the reviews and so on. Um, but one of the issues was supposedly the range um, uh, of the smart controller was not up to the range that the original controller came with. Um, not sure how accurate that was. I didn't see anything on YouTube comparing one to the other, so I thought, well, I guess I'll go ahead and do that and make a comparison, see what we came up with. So, uh, weather permitting, it's a little overcast this morning and I haven't uh, bothered to call my spotters yet because uh, I'm going to go do a, a test over Lake Matthews. It's about four miles long and um, I want to be able to have good visibility, again, for safety purposes and for, uh, for my spotters to see the, the drone itself. And uh, anyway, we'll get it out there and check it out, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've had some questions about the uh, smart controller and will it fit in the original Flymore case that came with the uh, Mavic Air 2. And this is the case, and uh, I have two batteries in here, plus my uh, Mavic Air 2 as well. So I just put the uh, smart controller in the front pocket and slide it down. And you can see it, it fits in there. It's a tight fit, but you can uh, zip it up and uh, off you go. So it does fit in there. It's nice and snug, but uh, not overly so, I don't think. Um, I do not have anything stored in this upper compartment here. There is a zipper here, and you can put in filters and blades and what have you in here. But uh, I think this is a little bit too much of a conflict, so I, I have, don't have those in there. I do have my... Uh, set of filters here and this goes on top of the batteries so that, that fits in there just just nicely I'm not sure you can see that probably can't but at any rate uh, just in case you're curious about that smart controller it does fit in your fly more case okay a couple things to note as we go uh, first off the elevation in the lower left hand corner is going to be limited to about 300 feet I didn't want to go any higher than that my takeoff point was uh, about uh, 50 feet above the water, so I didn't want to mess with that. In the upper right, we have the RC bars showing the reception of the controller, and uh, we'll want to pay attention to that as we, we fly along and look at the range. And uh, then up here, just to show, I end up putting it in sport mode. Uh, I'm not sure that was the greatest thing for the batteries, but uh, that's how I, how I flew it today. Maximum flight altitude reached. And then I also have uh, my target, this is the island, basically for both videos uh, with the smart controller and the Mavic 2 controller, I want to go over that island. And then lastly, we want to look at the, the footage here. Now, this is the distance we're traveling, and we'll be looking at the RC reception at those various distances. Um, I also sped up the, uh, the tape to six times speed here, and here we go. Uh, this particular first set is with the uh, smart controller from the MA2. And you can see at the uh, 5,000 feet or so, we drop from five to four bars. Um, and then we uh, zip along and uh, keep progressing over the lake again. This is uh, sped up uh, to 6x. I tried to make the video as short as I could uh, given the, all the flights and everything like that, but uh, let's hope it's not too long for you. And at this uh, next juncture here, we go from four bars to three bars, and that's uh, around the 10,000 foot mark or so. Uh, again, the FPV is good. The, the, the FPV never dropped off uh, regardless of the distance. 
And then we have a return to home. I did extend it a little bit, which was probably not a good idea. I'll explain that in a second here. <laughs> but I wanted to get out to 16,000 feet, and we did. And then I did a return to home. And you can see Go I home. made it out to uh, about 16,132 uh, actually was the, the exact number when I did the, the turnaround. Um, and the reason I talk about uh, the, return or the turnaround and extending the return to home is I'm flying over water, and towards the end of this flight, um, I was really having a pucker factor with whether or not it was going to make it all the way back and not drop into the lake. So uh, I strongly recommend that when your drone says return to home, it's probably a good idea to hit that button and either bring it back by yourself or uh, let the return to home uh, do it automatically. Now, we want to look at the RC bars again, and uh, we're going to go from 3 to 4. Now, it flickers on and off and varies a little bit, but at about uh, 10,000 feet or so, again, it gets a solid uh, 4 bars. <clears throat> and that uh, that's not, not bad, and it's consistent with its uh, out, uh, going away speed as well, or reception. And right about now, uh, I'm starting to get a little concerned about getting all the way back. Uh, I still have a ways to go over that water, and I only got five minutes left. And I, I you know, I made it no problem, but uh, you know, they do get worried. And then right about here, uh, about 4,000 feet, more than four or 5,000 feet, you get five solid bars for pretty much the duration of the uh, of the flight in. And I skipped all that just again to try to save time. And a nice little junk pile there, but I didn't want to show how the return to home works and the accuracy of the. Uh, the landing and I, I'm always impressed with uh, how well it can find its target and uh, go right back to, to its uh, original spot. Now this uh, next footage is from the smart controller and we're gonna take off here and uh, zoom on out and um, again we're gonna do the uh, the target will be the uh, the island and um, we're going to look at the uh, RC reception uh, as we uh, as we go, and to uh, to put it uh, succinctly here, the RC reception bars uh, on the smart controller flight were not as good as the reception bars on the original controller uh, ME2 controller bars. Um, the first when it drops from five to four at only 1400 feet, which is gonna happen right about now. And um, it's just a little over 14. And that, that you know, to drop from four to three, and, or five to four, uh, pretty quickly. Then we flew on out um, and it stayed at uh, four bars uh, all the way out till about 10,000 feet, which you'll see here, which is identical to, or very close to what the smart controller did or the uh, original MA2 controller. So, you know, what, whatever reason that is, or uh, I couldn't say, but at least the uh, you can see that it's uh, about 10,000 feet when it goes down to three bars. Now this is not a, a range test to see how far it would go. Uh, I'd do a whole different thing if I did that. This is a comparison of the two uh, controllers. And essentially, the battery limit uh, is what uh, made it uh, return to home here and this time I hit it I, I let it return to home automatically as opposed to uh, going any extra distance and it, it went further uh, up to 16532 but that was really based on the battery not on anything else and and it just had more charge on the battery so uh, but the FPV reception and the uh, performance of the of the uh, drone over this distance with both controllers was identical. I never lost reception. Uh, I, I never lost bad uh, or had bad FPV. Um, so in that sense, I would say, you know, it's three miles out. I mean, it's not practical to, to normally fly three miles to do your videos and uh, to do uh, photography and cinematography anyway. So from that standpoint, the two controllers pretty pretty similar. And here the, uh, the bar did uh, the RC reception did, did change uh, again a little shorter than than the uh, original controller, and uh, going up to five bars. And we're still at, at four, as you can see. It doesn't really get to five bars until 1,400 feet or so, which is quite a bit different than the original controller. So, whether that's 
significant or important? I, I can't say. I just know that for the entire flight, though, things worked out pretty well. I'm going to post the uh, the numbers here, and you can see that uh, uh, the difference in the bars. And basically, the uh, Mavic Air 2 uh, switching from five to four bars and four to three bars and so on uh, performed better in general uh, than the smart controller. Again, I'm not sure how much the reception might have been changing at the time I was flying. I tried. To, I flied immediately, or I flew immediately after the uh, first flight. So, um, I, again, I don't know how significant it is, but I can say this: that the screen on the uh, smart controller was very bright, and although you did not see it in the video, the iPhone screen dimmed halfway through the flight uh, coming back. And if I had flown it one more time, I am absolutely positive that the bars or the screen would have darkened to the point where I couldn't even see it. Um, and that's that's really why I got the smart controller. So the smart controls uh, screen was very bright and exceptionally easy to see and I really appreciated that. So just uh, my two cents on that. I hope this wasn't too long for you and uh, again thanks for uh, thanks for watching.